Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the sixth lecture of this bit manipulation series. And in this lecture, we are going to see a uh, total sum of XOR pairs. I mean, what is this? Let's see what is the problem statement. So we are given an array of n elements, and we have to calculate this time following. In the lecture five, we study something similar, uh, and so are going to do in the same uh, in this lecture so this time what we have to do we have to take every pair uh, unordered pair and then calculate its XOR sum so a1 XOR a2 plus a1 XOR a3 plus a1 XOR a4 and so on uh, and then we have to add all of these pairs so we have to take all uh, unordered pair XOR them and then add their uh, resultant into the final result and we have to print the final result if we explain this problem with an example so if this is an example then you have to calculate 5x or 9 plus 5x or 7 plus 5x or 6 plus 9x or 7 plus 9x or 6 plus 7x or 6 these are the result 5x or 9 is 12 and 5x or 7 is 2 and so on so the overall result is 47 so this is what we have to calculate so we have to take every uh, unordered pair unordered pair means 5 xor 9 is same as 9 xor 5 so for a pair we would calculate it only once so we have to count the total result if we look at the brute force approach or the new voice approach it is very simple we initialize the result with 0 then run a loop from 1 to n and then j from i plus 1 to n and then result plus equals a of i xor a of j now a r is the input array so the overall complexity of this is n square which is not very good and we intend to get uh, sublinear uh, complexity that is n log n let's see how we can do that to do this since we are studying bit manipulation it only makes sense that we study it at bit level or at least this approach so you see uh, these are the three numbers in the input 5 3 and 9 and these are their bit manipul uh, bit representation respectively so there are going to be total three pairs and the pairs are this 5xor3, 5xor9 and 3xor9. Now 5xor3 would result into 0110, 5xor9 would result into 1100 and 3xor9 would result into 1010. Now the total sum would be, uh, this is 6 I guess, 6, 12, 10. The overall sum 28. If I represent this in a little different uh, representation, then this is what it would look like. Uh, how many pairs are there with zeroth set bit? In all of these pairs, zeroth bit is not set. So there are zero pair with zeroth bit set. So uh, zeroth bit contributes to 2 raised to power 0 sum, right? So since there are zero number of pairs, so it total contribution would be 0 times 2 raised to power 0. Now, how many pairs are there with first set bit? First bit set. So, out of all these three pairs, there are two which is having first bit set. So, first bit contributes into the result as 2 raised to power 1 because the weight of first bit is 2 raised to power 1. And there are two pairs, so 2 into 2 raised to power 1. Same goes for the second bit. Second bit In second bit, there are two pairs which is having second bit set. So the overall contribution would be 2 into 2 raised to power 2. Same for the third bit. There are two pairs which are having third bit set. So the overall uh, addition to the result would be 2 times 2 because there are two pairs with third bit set and this is the weight of third bit. That is 2 raised to power 3. So the total contribution would be 0 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 which is again 28 so there are two ways to count first one we can simply take these number and second we can look them at bit level now what is purpose of this if we can directly add these numbers 
well to calculate these number actually there are going to be n square pairs and in uh, n into n minus 1 divided by 2 to be precise but asymptotically they are n square while this is actually log n only because we would look for the zeroth bit first bit second third and so on till if the input is 32 bit then we would look for 0 to 31st bit if the input is 64 bit then we would look from 0 to or uh, 33 uh, 60 third bit so this is going to be smaller than this of course but how to know that how many pairs are there with uh, ith set bit if i know there uh, there are two pairs after performing XOR of all pairs, there are two pairs which is having second bit set. Then I can in answer directly add 2 into 2 raised to the power 2 because second bit has 2 raised to the power 2 weight and there are two pairs which would generate that bit. So the overall result would be 2 times 2 raised to the power 2. So, so the overall problem reduces to find out how many pairs would have ith bit set, right? So, uh, to do that before we jump to the conclusion or director formula uh, try to answer this question when 5 is XOR with 3 will the 0th bit would be set so the answer is no because 0th bit of 5 and 3 both is having 1 so the XOR operation would result the 0th bit as 0 so 5 and 3 won't make a pair in which 0th bit is set so will 5 and 9 will make the 0th bit set after their XOR. So in the resultant of 5 XOR 9 the 0th bit will not be set because again same story 5 is having the 0th bit as 1, 9 is having the 0th bit as 1 so their XOR will have 0th bit as 0 as we can see in both of the pairs. For the 3 and 9 the same story because both are both of them are having 0th bit sets so the resultant would have 0th bit 0. So in all of these 3 pairs 5, 3, 5, 9 and 3, 9 there is no pair which is which would have 0th bit set. Now let's go for the first bit. Will 5 and 3 of XOR of 5 and 3 will make a, a, a first bit set the answer is yes because in 5 the first bit is 0 in 3 the first bit is 1 so we found one pair right so we increment the count the count becomes 1 now 5 and 9 the answer is no because 5 and 9 both are having 0 at their first position so the result would be 0 as we can see 5 and 9 is having 0 at the first bit now what about 3 and 9 3 and 9 would make a uh, first bit set because in binary representation of 3 the first bit is 1 and in 9 is 0 so 1 XOR with 0 is going to result into 1 so again we can see 5 and 3 are having 1 at the first position so you see one important thing two pairs would make the ith uh, two element would make the ith bit set if and only if one of them is having 0 bit at that position and another one is having 1 uh, bit at that position for example, uh, take a look at 5 and 3. The second bit, that is the uh, bit at index 2, the second bit at uh, uh, in binary representation of 3 is 0 while in binary representation of 5 is 1. So 5 or 3 are going to make the second bit as 1. See? So to, to count how many pairs are there such so that the ith bit in their uh, XOR is set, all you have to do is count how many numbers are there with ith bit set and how many numbers are there with ith bit as 0 since if there are x number of elements with ith bit set and there are y number of, of uh, elements which are having ith bit as 0 then the total number of pairs which would result ith bit as set are x into y as you can see here for the first bit uh, we see 5 and 9 both are having first bit as 0 so there are two elements with 0 and one element with 1 at the ith position so the total number of pairs are going to be 2 into 1 that is 2 2 into 1 means 2 that is 5 9 and 1 alone is 3 so 5 3 and 9 3 would have uh, the first bit as 1 as you can see 5 3 and, and 9 3 are having first bit set so all you have to do is count the total number of elements which are having the ith bit 
as 1 and the total number of element which are ha having the ith bit as 0 so the total number of pairs uh, in uh, total number of pair in which the ith bit would be set would be x into y only so we can know that how many pairs are there with ith bit set and hence directly multiply the weightage of that bit and add it to the result so all we have to count the number of zero uh, number of elements with ith bit zero and number of elements with ith bit one and we have to run a loop from 0 to 31 for 32 bit integers and for each bit we have to uh, for each bit we have to traverse all uh, the complete array and uh, so the complexity would be number of bits multiplied with array size so so multi uh, number of bit would be of course log n so the overall complexity would be n log n if i explain this if i uh, sorry if i show you with the implementation it would look something like this let's take an array i'm not going to take a very big array and and uh, result and yeah one more thing in zero or count zero and count okay we can define this inside so So now, till now what I have done, I have taken in, in input n and the integers and now our processing begins. So int result I have already declared. So for each bit, sorry, each bit, so 0th bit to 31st only because we are as we are taking the input as 32 bit integer so that is why all we have to do is take uh, uh we have to calculate result for the only 32 bits from 0 to 31 that is why for each bit we need to calculate how many elements in the array are having the is bit as 0 or 1 for that we would we would take come on count 0 count 1 then we would traverse the whole array there is equals to one j is n and then j plus plus we would see whether the ith bit is set or not and this thing how uh, i have already explained how to do this in my bit manipulation c's lecture of uh, one or two i don't remember that you can just go and check out that lecture in that series so we have to check whether the gth element is having the ith bit set or not so for that you can simply perform an and operation with the with one left shifted i times so if this is true this whole uh, expression would be non zero and if in the if condition anything you pass as non zero then this is considered as, as true so if the ith bit is set then count of 1 would increment else count of 0 would increment and then uh, the result would total number of pairs let me uh, int p is equals to total number of pairs that is count 0 multiplied with count 1 and the total result would be increment by result plus equals to the power i multiplied by total number of pairs right so to the power i which means i one left shifted i times multiplied with total number of pairs then finally we would print the result so this should work test okay now we are up and running for this test case there are three numbers five three and nine the result as you can see is 28 and let's go for this okay 
for the second slide where we had another example the answer of this was 47 i guess yeah 47 so let's test this as well okay so there are four numbers five nine seven and six so the answer is 47 as you can see so uh, this problem which was initially if you uh, if you solve this problem uh, using brute force approach the overall complexity is going to be n square but we can use bit manipulation and smartly enhance the running time of our algorithm to be n log n as you can see now there are two uh, nested loops one which runs till log n and another runs uh, till n so the overall complexity would be n log n when where uh, I mean log n I mean log the maximum number or you can directly consider if you are taking 32 bit number if you can consider it 31 and if you are working with 64 bit number then it is of course 64 64 times n or 32 times n so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and yep till the next video drops keep coding thank you